What is going on everybody and welcome to an updated StarCraft 2 AI tutorial series. Uh, if you don't know, StarCraft 2 is a sort of strategy based game where you've got units and buildings, you build these buildings, you can build units based on certain buildings that you have and you need certain buildings to build certain buildings. And anyways, you're trying to compete against other players, either one player or possibly multiple other players. And the idea is that you build units, you attack, uh, and you also collect like resources, stuff like that. It's a very big um, and still to this day, very popular strategy step-based game. So um, I am by no means a StarCraft II expert. If you are an expert, awesome. I'm not. So <laughs> you can talk all the smack that you want. Um, but hopefully what I um, employ here can help you to employ your expert strategy. There are also AI ladders and stuff like that where you can compete with other experts just like yourself uh, if you really need that outlet. So <laughs> for me, I'm mostly interested in this as more of like a sandbox environment just to play around uh, and then also to possibly develop reinforcement learning algorithms like with this environment. Uh, but that said, at least for the first few tutorials, this is all going to be like a rule-based strategy AI. So anybody can follow along no matter what you're interested in. So uh, to get started, what you are going to need is, um, we're going to be using this package here. It's just python-sc2. Um, I th I'll just put the link to this GitHub in the description because the actual initial setup of everything uh, is going to depend widely and vary widely depending on your operating system. But for the most part, you need StarCraft 2. To get StarCraft 2, you can theoretically get it on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, but as you can probably tell, I am on Windows. I made made the attempt. I gave it the old college try to get StarCraft 2 to run on Linux via like Wine and Proton and stuff. Uh, I just couldn't get it to work. And I just decided, okay, I'm going to dual boot into Windows. So that's what I did. Feel free to, to use Linux if you can, otherwise Windows um, and all that. So, so make sure you have a working version. There is a headless version of StarCraft 2 that does run on Linux very easily. Um, but you really need to like see the game. I mean, you don't have to. You could print stuff out and you could debug that way. But seeing it is, I don't know, it's like 90% of what makes this fun. So I think you want to be able to see it. So with that out of the way, once you've got StarCraft 2, uh, for some weird reason, when you install StarCraft 2, it comes with no maps. So you have to download these maps. I feel like there should be like some starting maps, but there are not. So anyways, once you download those, they come in these like packs, you extract them. And what you'll need to do is come over to your, if you're on Windows, for example, programming uh, or program files, StarCraft 2, and then you'll, I had to make a new directory called maps and place the maps within that directory. Uh, for this tutorial, at least for the first few, I'm going to be using this right here, uh, this this map. I will put a link in the description to where you can download that map, <laughs> but you don't have to use this exact same map. So if for some reason that map goes missing or whatever, um, there's like a EULA that you have to sign. Otherwise, I would host the map myself. But if it goes missing, you can just use a different map. I mean, it's not essential that you use the exact same map as I'm using. So uh, with that out of the way, uh, once you have that, and also this here you can find there's like bot ladders. Um, you can go here if you're interested in, in doing like the SE2 AI ladder competition type stuff. Um, other than that, uh, I think we're ready to just start diving in. So um, I find it to be pretty well documented, um, but I, I think the best thing you can do if you really want to learn how to like do all this stuff is just to kind of dive in. So uh, a couple things to think about. Um, actually, let's just start writing the code and then we'll kind of talk about... Um, We'll come up to this page probably pretty quickly. I guess since I'm here, I'll just point it out so I don't have to bring it back. Um, so within StarCraft 2, there are, again, I'm not a StarCraft 2 expert. This is my understanding of everything. So <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. Uh, there's like three races. You've got uh, Protoss, Zerg, and Terran. So Terran are like the humans, I suppose. Zerg are like, I don't know, insects and stuff. And then, uh, Protoss are like robots or something like that. Um, so I like Protoss purely because they look cool. So that's what I'm going with. But again, you don't have to do everything the way I'm going to do it. Um, although I would probably, since there are so many different building names and like the strategy of what you might do is going to vary by race, uh, you might want to follow along with the same race uh, for this series. But the other thing to take note of before we dive in is like, here, for example, if you want to, um, like immediately, as long as you have a unit to do so, you could build a Nexus, you could build an assimilator, and you could build this like pylon. Um, 
But if you want to build, for example, a cybernetics core, that means you must have a nexus and a gateway like building in place before you could build that cybernetics core. And at least for us, we're eventually going to get to building a Stargate and building those void rays. That's what I did last time. And I think that's a pretty good unit. I like the unit. It shoots laser beams. So, <laughs> so that's kind of the, the trajectory that we'll take, but we'll also use the cannons for some basic base defense. So um, different races are going to have different building names and different kind of things that you would build and probably different units that you would want to use. So uh, just keep that in mind. So there's that. And then also, um, I don't really think there's anything else. I, we'll, we'll talk about the things as, as we come across them in the code. So uh, with that, let me move this out of the way. And we begin. So uh, for our very, very basic starting code, uh, what I'm going to do is from se2.bot underscore AI, we're going to import bot A. Let me check the casing on this. Yes. Okay. Bot AI. So this is just your parent AI class that, that you'll inherit from. So uh, when you actually make your bot AI object or your your bot AI class, uh, it's going to inherit various things from this like main kind of parent class here. So moving on, we've got from se2.data, we're going to import difficulty and we will uh, import race. So when we go and define our race and then the computer bots race, uh, we'll use that and then the computer's difficulty from here as well. Uh, next, we have from se2.main, we're going to import run uh, run game. Uh, this is just something that facilitates the ability to actually run two agents against each other. Uh, next, we have from se2.player, we're going to import a bot type of player. That will be like what we write. So if you want to run from a script, it's going to be a bot. And then you also have computer. Computer. Um, finally, from SE2, we're going to import maps. So again, this is just a helper for loading maps. So now we're ready to actually build our, our bot. So we'll call it whatever the heck we want. I'm going to call it Incredibot. <laughs> and again, it is going to inherit from that bot AI that we imported up here. So Incredibot, um, we'll just start really basically. So async uh, define on step. Uh, self, and then what iteration are we at? That should be an integer. And uh, then we're just going to print a simple F string. Uh, the iteration is, and put a space there, and we'll do iteration. Okay, that should be good. And then we'll, we'll just run the game. So all, all we're going to do is just print that statement and run the game. So run game. And then we'll do maps.get. And again, I'm going to use this 2000 atmosphere S, atmospheres, A-I-E. And, but you can use any other map. Like you don't have to use this exact map. Um, then it'll be a list of the players. And in this case, first we're going to have a bot player. That's going to be us. We're going to pass race.protoss. Uh, and the class, basically, or the object of the, the, the code for this bot will be Incredibot, Incredibot, so it'll just be an Incredibot object. And then the other player that we will add is, I wish that would get out of my face, is going to be a computer player, race, and you can pick different race if you want. I'm going to go with Zerg for now. And the difficulty will be hard. Um, oh, and then we'll add a, whoops, let me see here. Okay, boom. <laughs> okay, real time, we will set that to be false for now. Uh, if that is set to true, the agent has a limited number of time to like make its calculations and take its step. I don't know what that length of time is. Uh, feel free to comment down below. I just, I honestly just haven't pulled through the documents to, to figure that out. But eventually, you know, if you were competing against other players, uh, it would be a little unfair if one of those players is taking like, I don't know, an hour per step, you know? <laughs> so, so this is just to make sure people are writing efficient code, I suppose. Uh, so for now, we'll set it to false because who knows, we may not write efficient code here. So let's go ahead and I'll save that and let's go ahead and run that. Yes. Uh, let me make this a little, let's see, 
Oh, there we go. A little bigger. Again, I'm, I haven't used Windows truly in like years. So please uh, give me a pass for <laughs> being a little clunky here. So to run it, it's just Python 3 and then the script name. So sc2-1.py and pray for no errors. <laughs> the moment of truth. So here, okay, so here we've got our game. This will be kind of our debug windows. Well, at least for now, all it's going to do is print out the iteration that we're on. But this will be the actual GUI of the game. So here we can see, yeah, we're printing out the iterations. We have these little dudes here uh, doing some work for us. These are just like our worker units. And uh, I guess in the back end, they just automatically are going to be going to collect these minerals here. And if, I think I can just, I don't know if I can actually like, so you can use your arrow keys to like move around. Um, we've already been defeated. <laughs> we can, you can use your arrow keys to like move around. I find the moving around thing is kind of clunky. Also, I wish I could like click on the map to just like move where I am viewing on the map. I don't know if it's like for competitive reasons, you can't do something like that. Uh, but let me know if there's like a quick way to move via that map, but I don't think there is. Uh, anyways, we'll just load back up again so I can explain a couple of things, uh, before we close out the tutorial. Um, so these, so I think if I just, oh, I did the same thing I just did. <laughs> I think if I like grab the, the like the top of the yeah, it kind of pauses. I don't know if I can actually pause. With, no, I can't seem to pause with escape. Ah, oh, it's so painful. Okay, whatever. Anyways, these are like minerals that we have to get, and then you'll see here we can see how many minerals we have. We can also print that out. That's accessible, and then we have gas here. That's like that Vespian gas. That's like this thing here and this thing here. Uh, later, we'll need to collect that as well. And then these are just little worker units. In theory, these little worker units can like go and attack, but it's kind of pointless. They're very weak, so it'd be unlikely you would be <laughs> you'd be winning anything that way. But you could theoretically do that, and I think that is actually the sample code um, that they show. Uh, on the actual uh, main GitHub here. So yeah, here, basically all they do is like, we're, we're basically up to here. And then all we're doing right now is just printing the iteration. Um, but then basically this, this basic code is just saying, hey, if it's iteration zero, take all your workers and send them to the enemy. <laughs> so, so that you can do something like that if you want, but um, it's not going to go well. So um, that's it for the introduction and the next in coming videos. What we're going to be doing is actually like building buildings, kind of working through the logic of like, how do you build these buildings in the right order? Uh, how do we defend ourselves? And then finally, how do we attack and hopefully defeat the enemy and ideally defeat um, an enemy of all three races? So different races have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, and again, there's there's so much strategy involved here. And again, this is why, like, I'm just going to stress, I don't know hardly anything about StarCraft II, really. <laughs> so, like, I've just written some very basic AIs. Um, but there, there's so much here, and there really is a, one of the things that makes this game cool is there is so much depth here that really it's almost like infinite competition for you. Uh, if, if you like doing this sort of thing, you can go... Uh, very far or very deep. <laughs> so anyways, uh, that's all for now. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in another video.